Where he's come from as a person, a player, uh, how professional he is now, it's just, uh, you know, that, that's why we're here. That's what we do is uh, help these guys uh, set up the rest of their life. And he's obviously uh, got an uh, unbelievable future in front of him. Led you in an ACC championship his last year here, too. When when he left here and when he started to go to the European Tour and started to play, did you know something like this was possible? Well, the thing about Jonas was, was every he's one of those guys, if you look at a ladder, every step that he would go up the ladder, he would just get better. He would never go back down. So you knew when he got comfortable on the Nationwide Tour that at that point in time he, he was just going to get better, and that's what he did. And then once he got in the final 25 there, I think he finished in the top five, his third year on the Nationwide Tour, went straight out on the, the PGA Tour, and uh, he just continues to get better and better. You got a chance to walk with him all week at Augusta. Just talk about the experience. I mean, being at the pinnacle of golf, seeing one of your guys do that well. Uh, you, you know, it, it's it's funny because the roles are you're always his coach, and, and I just feel like I'm his coach. But now I'm in now I'm a spectator. I got a spectator badge. I'm cheering for him. Um, I know my role. My role has changed. But at the end of the day, I'm there to support him and and to, and. You know, in the evenings to to be there with him, having dinner, and tell old stories, and keep his mind off of golf, and uh, help him if any way possible I can, whether it be cook his dinner or or just uh, tell him how great he is. Last two majors, top five finishes. I mean, he finishes this high. Talk about just kind of the role he is on right now. Well, it, it's also says what kind of player he is. You know, one of the things is he's got an unbelievable putter. Everybody saw that this weekend. He can really pitch it. Uh, but he's tough. He, he doesn't let things get under his skin. You know, he never had a three putt this week, and he never had a back-to-back -back bogey. So he never followed up a bogey, even with some of the, the bad breaks that he had. If you if you have a ball go in that water on 11 two days in a row, then you step up to the 12th tee. And that's about as hard a bounce back as you can ever be asked for to, to stand up and hit that shot. And he did it. So that, that that's the thing that's so impressive to me. If you talk about majors, what it takes in that situation is, one, you have die speed with a putter and and you've got to be able to be a tough person and and, and they're made for him so you're, you're gonna see him in this situation again in his first masters he goes out and has every single round under par that's that's a pretty nice start well and the other thing too is he never left the leaderboard you know if you think about it he goes out and i think he makes three or four birdies on the on the first nine holes he played turns in 33 and never leaves the leaderboard the entire tournament. So he's comfortable there. You know, you saw some people coming in and out of it and, and doing whatever, but um, just just his competitiveness kept kept him up there all week. And, you know, the thing about golf is, you know, you've heard, you guys have heard me talk about it with my own team, you just don't get to win enough, and you can't play defense, you can't control the other person. But if there's a ball that hits a tree and goes in the water on 13 or, or, or if a ball bounces one way or another, you're sitting there talking about how he's a Masters champion without anything else happening differently over 72 holes. So um, people are coming up a little bit saying, man, I'm sorry. To, you know, there's nothing to be sorry about. You know, he, he, he put himself in an opportunity that uh, will only make him better, and, it's, and it was a lifetime experience. The future for him, too, looks pretty bright. He gets to play in the Masters again next year, and he gets to play in every single major this year from here on out. Talk about the future for him. Well, and, and then I, I was fortunate to do an interview last night with the European Golf World, and, and that just took a huge step toward his next goal was the Ryder Cup. And that's something he's always wanted to do uh, since he has been since he's been here, and he just took a giant step toward that. So uh, you're going to see him leave the, leave the PGA Tour a little bit later in the year to go over to the European Tour to uh, qualify there with with the starts he needs, and uh, that that'll be his next thing is to be in the Ryder Cup in September. How special is this for you too? To it is one of your guys, but to know that you've got some guys coming down the pipe, like a Brooks Kepka, you've got Jack McGuire or Hank Lebiota on down the line here playing right now. It just seems like these guys are continuing to take the next steps that Jonas did when he was here. And hopefully they'll learn learn from him. You know, he, he, he did it. He did it in the same environment that they're in. Uh, I hope we're better coaches now than we were when, when Jonas was here because we always want to continue to get better. Um, but they have an opportunity that's sitting in front of them just like he had an opportunity. He took his opportunity and uh, continues to do that. What can this do for your program, too? Because Florida State really did get a lot of exposure. I and mean, The announcer, Jim Nance, kept mentioning Florida State all the time throughout all four days. How special can this be? Well, we're so proud of the school. You know, everyone that comes here and the, the amount of 
stuff I got from social media was just, just amazing. Uh, and the, the followers that we have out there. So you understand how, how much bigger it is than the little group. So I guess you have a huge group with the Seminole Nation, and, and then you break it down to it's kind of my boy. So uh, it, it, it was awesome. Did he ever go to you for any advice while you were walking with him? Well, he can't, and, and that's one of the trick, you know, it's kind of weird things is you're only allowed advice from one person, and that's his caddy during the round. So um, that's why you'll never see players go to the ropes very much. He, he would come over and, and might say something funny or ask something weird, but he would n never give anybody the uh, opportunity to call in or to say that, hey, he's seeking advice outside the ropes. Um, so, so we made sure of that now at dinner the night before or whatever else. Yeah. I might ask him about a shot or what he was thinking or what he saw there or what his numbers were, but but you really don't want to talk about a guy with him because he he puts so much into it. He is exhausted when he gets done. If y'all saw that interview, and I did not, but I would imagine that he was just beat up at the end of that thing. And I know when he got home at night, you know, we just tried to get his mind off of golf and and just you know tell tell stories about Florida State and and what he did and, and enjoy uh, getting him away from it a little bit. You seem a little bit tired yourself. Well, it was, <laughs> it, it, it was emotional. It, you know, it really was. I mentioned to someone, golly, this tournament's a whole lot more fun to watch when you don't really have a vested interest whether that ball goes in the water on 11, 12, 13, or 15. But when you have a huge vested interest and that's your guy out there, your nerves go up and down on, on every swing, and you're praying for balls to land, you're praying for balls to get up, you're praying for them to stop all in this, well, all within a minute and a half, you know, 30 seconds. So it, it's a little bit different uh, walking around Augusta when, when, when you get, when your guy's out there, I promise you. Has it sunk in for you yet? I mean, I know obviously it's just the day after, but to, to do what he did, I mean, it, there are very few guys that could have gone out there and played that well. Absolutely. I guess it has not. You know, I turned to one of his teammates, who his roommate that was over here with him, and I turned to him on 15 when he's going for it, and I said, that's your college roommate that's about to pull the trigger to see if he can make a three here and win the Masters. And he said, yeah, he's still the same guy, isn't he? And I said, yeah, off the course, he's, he's still a little, little airheaded and, and uh, the same guy he was.